right, so let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to e-learning with Adobe Captivate and how to incorporate your e-learning into Adobe RoboHelp, specifically RoboHelp 2020. Tell you a little bit about myself. This is Kevin Siegel. I am the founder and president of Icon Logic. I have been teaching for more than 30 years now using RoboHelp since the very early days of RoboHelp's existence, going all the way back to when this product was owned by Blue Sky Software, then later eHelp Corporation, then Macromedia, and now with Adobe. And I've written books on RoboHelp going all the way back, I like to say, to the beginning of time. And during this session, I'm going to talk to you all and show you how to create software simulations with Adobe Captivate. And when we do that, I'm going to actually record my screen. And if you'd like to follow along, all you need is Adobe Captivate and Adobe RoboHelp. The trial versions of the software works fine. And when I'm using Captivate, I'm going to use the software to record software simulations of something very simple on my computer. I'm going to be using Notepad. So if you want to follow along with that, you'll be able to do every bit of this. I'm going to create software simulations in four different modes relatively quickly. And I'll explain the steps as I get to them. And again, you'll be able to follow along and practice if you'd like. And after I've created my e-learning content, I'm going to take that content into Adobe RoboHelp version 2020 and show you how that works. And then as I've got the content in my Adobe RoboHelp topic, I want to show you some techniques you can use to make it even easier for your learners to consume your e-learning content. And that's it. There are no slides in my presentation. This is all in the tool, using the tool and learning how to incorporate. So let's go ahead and get started. So I am using my Windows machine, virtual machine today, but you can use RoboHelp and Captivate on the Mac as well. So uh, what I've got installed on my PC today is the Adobe Technical Communication Suite, which I love and includes FrameMaker, Captivate, RoboHelp. And uh, I'm on subscription, of course. And so both of these tools will work together beautifully. But on the Mac side, this process works the same. So if you've got RoboHelp for the Mac and Captivate for the Mac, follow along just as I'm doing now. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to bring up Notepad just so we can practice what we're going to record together as a group. And I'm going to just type change my page orientation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the process of changing my page orientation in Notepad. So keep in mind that everything that I'm doing right now, you can do in any program on your computer, whether it's a desktop application or a web application, it doesn't matter. If Captivate can see it, you can capture your screen. So I'm going to run a rehearsal. This is what I'm going to capture with Captivate. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to choose Page Setup. I'm going to change the orientation to Landscape. You see where I'm pointing here? I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back to the File menu, Page Setup. Come on down here to Portrait, and OK. Now that's all I'm going to record. So if Captivate were actually recording me, I would press the end key on my keyboard to stop the recording or whatever key you've come up with. It's a different key combination on the Mac. Uh, I do recommend if you're using a Mac, get an extended keyboard so that you have the same types of keys that PC users have. You just have less trouble getting Captivate to stop the recording if you've got that extended Macintosh keyboard. And that's what I'm using today. Um, I've got loaded on my system a Logitech keyboard that has an end key. So I'll be pressing that when I end my recording. Now, I'm going to switch to Adobe Captivate. Almost like I rehearsed this in advance, right? Captivate ready to go. And I'm going to double click software simulation. 
And what happens on my screen is you get this red box right here. This red box is known as the capture area or the capture zone. I like to think of it as Captivate's single eyeball with Captivate looking right through this red box and anything inside that red is going to get captured. Anything outside the red is not going to get captured. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a window size. So you see it says custom size here. I'm going to change my size to a size that is more appropriate for someone on a mobile device, which is my likely target audience. So keep in mind that the output that we create with Captivate coming up is going to be HTML5. No flash. Flash got deprecated a couple of years ago, so don't output flash. Even though this version of Captivate will still let you output flash, you output HTML5. And because it's outputting HTML5, my content will play on any kind of device, Mac, PC, laptop, desktop, tablet, phone, smartphone, doesn't matter. It'll all play. The output will scale up and down depending upon my device because I can output my Captivate project to accommodate that. But it's all going into RoboHub anyway in this instance. But certainly these Captivate projects can be uploaded to your web server independent uh, of using RoboHub. So if you output HTML5 with Captivate, it can go right to your web server. You do not have to go to RoboHub. Of course, for this session, we are going to be going into RoboHub so you can see how to create interactive help systems, right? So I'm going to choose 1280 by 720. That's an important size. And you can move this red box, by the way, just by dragging the, um, the edge like I'm doing right now. That 1280 by 720 is an important size. Think 16 by 9 aspect ratio, meaning 16 across, 9 high, and you keep doubling the size. So 16 times 2, 9 times 2, 9 times 3, 9 times 4, and on it goes. 16 by 9 is a widescreen format, and that will match the majority of your end users. So I recommend definitely widescreen, if nothing else, 16 by 9 specifically. 16 by 9 is the recommended YouTube aspect ratio, 1280 by 720. It's not the only 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but it's the one that I typically go and use with all of my projects, unless a client specifically says, we need you to use this specific size. Otherwise, it's 1280 by 720. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my notepad window and kind of resize it so that it fits elegantly into the red box. So you see, I'm just kind of resizing it here. And at the bottom, I'm not resizing the red box that would resize the capture window. It's staying at 1280 by 720. You see, I'm just pulling it over here as well. Now, if you're on a PC, you can also choose application and lock to the notepad window. That's not going to work so well on the Macintosh because of the way the Mac and the menu bar do not float within the window. So look at this. I'm going to going to resize my notepad window and just show you how that application setting works. It's kind of nice. So I'll come here to application and I'll choose notepad, right? And then I'll choose my custom size and go back to 1280 by 720. And you'll see here that the red box, the capture window, and notepad are the same size. It's kind of nice. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a recording type. And automatic over here means I want Captivate to pull all the screenshots, much like you'd get if you use Snagit. Manual mode means you've got to manually pull all the shots, and I don't want to be responsible for that. I want Captivate to do all the heavy lifting for me. Uh, demo mode, assessment mode, training mode, custom mode. I'm going to turn on demo, which was already on, assessment, training. I'll leave custom for later, a little surprise coming with that. We're going to look at the settings for these three modes in just a second. Now, Panning means capture something outside of the red box. In this instance, if I were to try to capture something on my desktop here, it would be completely disjointed and I wouldn't do it. But you might be recording a software simulation in a program that's got windows popping up all over your desktop and you've got to move from one of these panels or windows or pods to another. That's where panning might come in handy. There are two options. 
automatic and manual, but for this session, I'm going to do no panning. I do tell people in my beginner Adobe Captivate classes, be careful with panning because if you pan and you're not elegant with your moving around the screen, you end up with what I like to call the Blair Witch Project effect, where the camera is jerking all over the place. And I don't think you want that. Audio, certainly do recommend audio for your e-learning. It has been proven in my experience that voiceover audio enhances the learner experience, and I would recommend it wholeheartedly. I'm not going to muddy the waters for this session with audio. I'm just going to record the screen and then leave it to you to play with audio later if you'd like. So audio will be left off. System audio is kind of nice, by the way. System audio would pick up the sounds my computer is making that I would be hearing through my headset. I am wearing a headset right now. And during the recording process, those sounds will be picked up. So if you're using software that makes clanging noises or confirmation beeps, it would be a good idea to turn on system audio to pick up the sounds if you like. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to choose settings and that's going to open up captivates preferences right quick. See there. And you've got a modes category and in this drop down menu, these modes match those check boxes that we saw earlier. And I turned on demo assessment and training. Now with demonstration mode selected, I just want you to notice that captivate is going to automatically add the text captions. Captivate is going to automatically show my mouse location and movement, and it's going to add highlight boxes on click. Whatever any of those mean, we're going to see in a minute. These are the defaults. I have not done anything to change these default settings. Now I'm going to change the mode to assessment only because we also picked that on the previous screen, right? You did demo assessment and training. And in an assessment simulation, there are going to be no text captions no mouse location and movement and no highlight box on click again whatever those are you're not getting them right so in this instance it's completely the reverse of a demonstration instead with an assessment you're getting these things called click boxes what are those those are interactive hot spots that are going to get added during the recording process it is going to make this an interactive simulation it's going to be fantastic Failure captions will let the learner know they didn't do the clicks correctly, which is also going to be awesome getting some feedback. And I'm going to change my mode here to training simulation. And the only thing that's changed now is hint captions have been turned on. So in a training simulation, you think of it as a kinder, gentler kind of a learning experience. So if the learner moves their mouse close to where they're supposed to click on those click boxes, they'll get some feedback. If they click on the wrong place, they'll get some feedback. If they do the step correctly, good to go. These are all defaults. Again, I haven't changed anything. Matter of fact, if you click restore defaults, you can prove that, right? Hit restore defaults. You'll see that these are the things that are checked by default out of the box. Meaning whatever I get right now that you're going to see live, is what you get out of the box. So there's nothing special you have to do. You just have to kind of get out of the way. Now, before I click OK and record my simulation, I do want to check out the keyboard shortcuts. I mentioned the end key earlier. I'll go to keys global and you'll notice the stop recording key is end. The Macintosh users, you'll know right away that that is not the same thing on yours. It's a series of three keys. That's what I recommend. You click in this box and you can type any key on your keyboard, really. Like I'll do control S right now and I've changed the keyboard shortcut. Of course, if I click restore defaults, it puts it back to end. And I'm going to go with the default. You change your keyboard shortcuts if you feel like you need to, because maybe there's something on your computer that's conflicting with uh, recording. Like maybe you've got snag it and the end key with snag it launches. Okay. So change the key here. All right, that's it. I'm going to click OK. And I go back to that control panel now, ready to record. Remember, when I get done recording, it's the end key that I'm going to press. So I'm going to click record. I get a three, two, one countdown. And you can just take a breath. Whew, you don't have to race through the recording. Captivate's only going to pull screen captures if you click your mouse. So all this nonsense that I'm doing with the mouse right now, 
isn't being captured. So I'm going to go to the file menu. There was a screen sound effect. I'm not sure if you heard that through my headset, but it did pick up the ch -ch -ch sound effect. Page setup. More screenshots. Landscape. Okay. I do recommend that you go nice and smooth and steady as you do your recording. Don't go too fast. You can go slower if you want. Slower is probably better. And okay. And do y'all remember the keyboard shortcut to stop the recording? Do you remember what it was? The end key, which I pressed just now. And that's going to have captivate, create my software simulations for me. Now check this out again. This is straight out of the box. And by the way, to check your version of captivate, you go to the help menu and you choose about Adobe captivate. And I believe, yeah, 11.8 point something, something, something. Those are the latest. Adobe did release an update uh, for operating systems compliance not too long ago. So check your settings. And if, um, if you think you don't have the right uh, version of Captivate, you can go to your help menu and choose check for updates and see if you can't get the latest and greatest. Okay. Check for updates is right here. All right. So I've got three projects open on my computer, the, a training one, an assessment one and a demo one. And you can see I can switch between them with by clicking their tab with my mouse here. So on the demo one, switch to the demo one if you're following along with me. And I'm going to go to the preview tool and choose project. Let it generate its preview. Going to click the autoplay icon. My hands are off the mouse completely now. Check it out. Everything I did was recorded. I did this live. I did not have a safety net. Yes, I've done this before, so I pretty much know what's going to happen. But I did not pre-record this demo you're seeing on screen. I've been doing this for years, folks. And I still find this is like a wonder that Captivate does all the screen captures for me and writes the content. I just love it. So I'm going to re rewind so we can see that again. And I love how the mouse is uh, basically moving and showing me. But what I don't love about this is perhaps the look of the captions with the gray and the black text. It's totally editable. What I also may not appreciate uh, and would want more control of is the fact that this is not interactive. I have to sit and watch. And certainly by sitting and watching, you can learn. Sure, pay attention, you'll learn. But I am a firm believer that you will learn more and you will learn better and you will retain longer if you actually do. Let me close the preview here. That's this little X in the upper right. Now, don't, don't click this X. <laughs> That's a fake close. That's the one from your screen recording. I, I always giggle when I see my students try to click this one and it's it's not closing you see i'm clicking it it's because that's fake uh, this is the real one so i'll click it now i'm going to switch to the assessment remember captivate recorded three projects because i did three check boxes before i hit the recorder and i'm going to preview this one so again the preview to project this gives me a reasonable facsimile of my end product from my end users and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting ah there we go so i'm going to go ahead and um hit the play button and you notice this time there is no mouse moving around the screen right there's nothing well, that's my mouse but there's nothing happening in my my demo because this is not a demo this is a simulation so i'm supposed to go to the file menu right but instead i go to format and i get a failure message Reminder that the appearance of the caption and its size can be customized. So I'll click format again. And I think that the word item is cut off. I can edit all of that in production. I'm going to do the step correctly. I'm going to go to file and the simulation moves forward like notepad would. So to me, as the learner, this feels like I'm using notepad, not a simulation of notepad. I can't do anything I want. Like if I click open, that's a failure. But if I choose page setup, that's a successful click. 
I move forward. I go to landscape. So you check it out. I am completely now interacting with a software simulation. You guys digging this? I am. And okay, I'll close the preview. I'm going to move to the training one. I'm going to preview the project. We do a lot of stir and repeat here, you know, just stir, repeat, stir, repeat. So as you work with me, you'll see that I just do the same things over and over and over again. So you all can get that repetition. So I previewed the project. I'm waiting again for my machine to catch up to me. Autoplay. Now, if I hover above the file menu, you can see the hint caption. Do you see that? Otherwise, this simulation is exactly the same as the assessment. If I make a mistake, I'll get the failure. If I'm a mouse wiggler, not a mouse clicker, nothing happens. If I click failure, if I move my mouse in an exploratory way, get close. Oh, there you go. And I'll click. You get the idea, right? That's the hit. Let me close the preview. So I love the, the demo. I love the fact that Captivate put the captions in. I, I don't know how I feel about the mouse, but okay, the mouse is moving around. That's cool. The assessment let me actually do it, but didn't give me any context, no information in advance of my click. The only way an assessment is going to be successful if, is if um, I am already shown the demonstration. So I have to watch a demo or be shown how to do it. Then you're going to assess that I can actually do it. Seems fair to me. And the training one is the same as an assessment, only kinder, gentler. And as far as I'm concerned, all three modes are awesome. If I had all the time in the world, I create all three modes, put them out on my web server, bring them into RoboHelp, and let the learner go through this less than three times. But that is not reality. In reality, you're only going to get one shot at this, really, for a learner who is stressed out and busy. And I think you got to maximize their experience with your lesson. So I'm going to close all three of these recordings. Say la vie. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye. And I'll start with nothing again. And I'm simply going to tell Captivate to make another software simulation. So on the new tab, I double click software simulation, right? And Captivate remembers what I did last. So the, the screen is ready to go, except I'm going to make a change. I'm going to turn on custom and I'm going to turn off the other three. Custom is the most powerful of all the modes that have ever been. I love it. Let me show you it. I'll click settings. I'll change the mode to custom. Now, here's the thing. There is a reason that most people don't use custom mode out of the box. Most people actually create demonstrations. And it's not because demonstration is the best. It's because people don't understand how to set up custom mode. So let me show you. You turn on text captions. You turn on click boxes. You turn on failure captions. Why? Text captions are going to add the instructions to your Captivate presentation, right? That tell the learner what they're supposed to be doing. And again, you can edit those in post-production so you can add more context. Why are you doing what you're doing, which I think is important. Click boxes is going to make your, your recording interactive out of the box. Interactivity is good. Let the learner do it. And of course you want feedback. If the learner does the step wrong, most adults appreciate plain talk. They did something wrong. Tell me what I did wrong. Success captions would be positive reinforcement for the click, but I don't think you need that for most adult learners. Maybe with children, you'll need it, but not with adults. And for most of my audience, we're training adults, not children. So we tend to not do positive reinforcement. We do negative reinforcement written in a kinder, gentler way. You don't have to be mean about it with those failure captions. All right, that's it. These are the three settings. Take a snapshot of that, right? And I'll click OK. And I'll record. Again, three, two, one. And off we go, taking our time. File menu. Page setup, landscape. Okay, back to file, page setup, portrait. Okay.
end. Okay, preview the project, check this out. You guys ready for this? I don't think you're ready for this. You might be ready for this. I'm filling time for the generation to finish. It's like watching water boil. Here we go. Autoplay. I'm clicking where it says to click. It's working. Tell me to click page setup. I make a mistake. Gives me failure message. I click page setup. Landscape. You see, I'm doing this. This is just awesome. All right, let me close the preview. Be a good idea to save my project now. I hate to crash and lose this. This is awesome. So I'm going to save. And I'm going to save it to my C drive. And I've already got a folder set up here called RoboHelp 2020 Data. You can download that folder from the IconLogic website, Data Files. So go to IconLogic.com, Data Files. You'll find these assets if you'd like to download them. Uh, the RoboHelp 2020 data assets are free to download and play with. I'm going to save this project into my e-learning folder, which is, again, I already set up in advance. And I'm going to call this uh, my recording. Clever, right? I've already got three other Captivate projects in there, but this will do. Now, I told you you can edit this project post-production. So this caption right here, which I can move around. I can resize it if I think it's too small, right? Easy enough. But what I also love about this is I can go to my properties panel. The style being used is called default failure shape style. I'm going to change my font to Verdana right down here. I'm going to change my size to 15. Change here on screen, the change has not affected any other slides. If I go to another slide, notice that this font and size change did not happen. I go back to slide one. I select the caption that I've just changed. Uh, I come over here to the little menu to the right of style name. And I choose save changes to the existing style. And that's going to impact every failure caption in my project. Check it out. Right. Nice. Nice. I'll come back up here to slide number one. I'll select this caption, which is using this by default. Um, it says it's using default capture caption style. I'm going to change the style to, a, let's see, um, Halo Blue. And I'm going to change my font to Verdana. Change my size to 15. And then I'll save the changes to the existing style. And if it didn't work, let me see what's going on here with slide number two. So I got some overrides here. So I'm going to check this little box here, replace modified styles. Check this out. I'm going to run this routine again. Replace modified styles is basically going to say anything that's not following the style is going to get wiped out clean. So I'm going to go to the halo blue again. Font is Verdana. Size is 15. Remember now. Doing the steps again, except I've checked replace modified styles. Now, if I come over to my little menu here and save changes to existing style, I'm being told, hey, you're basically overwriting all your styles. I'll just click OK to that. And let me see now. Look at that. I made it see things my way, right? All the captions are halo blue. So bottom line is you can completely customize the look and feel of your captions. I'll put this failure, by the way, back where it was, kind of right about that position. And I'll save. And now I'm going to publish, right? I'm going to publish and I'm going to get this project into Adobe RoboHelp. I'm going to do it live with you. So if something goes horribly wrong, you'll be there to experience it. So won't that be fun if I get to, if something goes wrong for me, you'll get to see me try to scramble and fix it. So file, publish. So I'm going to leave it as my recording. I'm going to target that same C drive where I've got my RoboHelp 2020 data folder, and I do have my e-learning folder. And I'm going to make a uh, folder called Adobe. 
and I'll select that folder. And I'm going to publish as HTML5. Remember, even though Swift Flash is still available in RoboL, don't publish as that format. The next version of Captivate will not have Flash. Flash got deprecated at the end of 2020, so it's been a while now. I'm not going to have to zip. I'm not going to worry about fonts because I use really standard fonts. I am going to turn on scalable HTML, HTML content so that my lesson will get bigger or smaller for me automatically. If I'm the learner and I've got a big screen versus a small screen, it won't matter. The lesson will scale up and down. That's nice. All right, I'm going to click publish. It'll ask me if I want to look at the final results. Uh, yes, I do want to take a look at this. I've been working hard. And here is my finished lesson that I recorded with you live. You can see the captions have been updated. And I'll show you the failure. That's been updated as well. Nice, right? I love this. All right, I'll close the browser. And I'll save my Captivate project. Captivate does not have to be running if you want to integrate with RoboHelp. So now I'll switch to RoboHelp. And I have opened up the project from the RoboHelp 2020 data folder called Images and Multimedia. So if you want to follow along exactly what I'm doing, you can open up that project because I'm trying to save you some of the legwork of making topics in RoboHelp. That's not what this is about. This is about integrating e-learning. And if you take a look, uh, at my topics here, I've got one called the Learning Center. And I'm going to press uh, enter here. And uh, I'm going to type uh, the recording I did live with all of you. And uh, this is using the heading style. So I'll come over here to my styles tool. It's going to use my heading two style. So there, there you got that. So just got four paragraphs here and I'm going to press enter. So now what I want to do is I want to integrate into this topic that RoboHelp, that, that, that Captivate lesson that I just recorded. So there is an icon here at the top of the screen, a little toolbar. And one of the tools is for multimedia. And if you click that, isn't this convenient? Adobe has added in their Adobe RoboHelp tool an option to import Adobe Captivate demo. I'll click that. I'm going to I uh, oh, let me press cancel first. I'm actually going to go to my assets and I'm going to import the Adobe Captivate demo. Let me do it this way. And I'm going to navigate to my RoboHelp projects. And I'm going to open up from data, I should say. I'm going to open up eLearning. I'm going to open up Adobe. I'm going to open up that recording that I published. And I'm going to bring in the index page. And that makes this CPZ file, right? Now, I started going through this icon here and realize I don't have to do that. I'm just going to bring it into my project. So here it is as a CPZ, which is kind of a weird extension because Captivate projects are CPTX files. CPTX files and CPZs, that, that doesn't work. Like what's up with that? Well, CPZ is a special type of format that Adobe created to take all of those assets when you publish this HTML5 and make them an importable package into RoboHelp. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag that CPZ file into my RoboHelp project. And there it is, shows up as this little box. Now, I can select this topic here, the, the, the Captivate lesson, and come over to my topic properties panel. And I can, under content here, this icon right here, change the size. So the width was 1280. So I can just type 1280 and get the size back to what I had it when I created the lesson. 
and it is 1280 by 720. So the fact this little padlock was on, when I do 1280 by 720, it becomes 720 for a height. So I'll save and I'll preview, which is this icon right here. And I'll click play and look at this. Totally interactive through my RoboHelp project, right? I'm, I'm going to go back to edit mode. Let me try this again, okay? So I'm going to delete the thing that I put into my cafe project. I'm not going to resize it this time. You don't have to resize it. My personal opinion is that the CPZ, when you drop it into a RoboHelp topic, is too small. But you've seen now you can resize it. You drag the CPZ here. And you can leave it the size if you want. That's fine. Now, I'm going to do this a couple more times. So check it out. I'm going to bring in additional Captivate lessons. Right click, import Adobe Captivate demo. Inside my e-learning folder, which is part of RoboHelp 2020 data, you can use mine or you can create your own. All right. You can do three or four different projects if you want. I'm going to bring in copy and paste the index file. I'm going to bring in another one. From e-learning, save file. I'm going to bring in one more. From e-learning, start an application. Again, index. These projects are much older the copy and paste, save file, start an application. They're much older. Uh, I've been using these projects for years. And of course, you saw me create the one called My Recording. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make space for each of these RoboHelp recordings. They're all interactive simulations, all created with that custom mode. And I'm going to take start an application and drop it in here. Save a file, drop it in here. Copy and paste. Let me scroll down. Drop it in here. Okay. Now, got three Captivate projects in one lesson, which can be def definitely potentially overload for your learners. Let me see how this is going to look. The preview tool in the upper right. Okay. So there are my three lessons, each of them interactive. I'll hit autoplay for this start an application. And each of them, like I said, is letting me interact and do things on screen. Pretty cool, right? Now, I'm going to save. Just control S to save. Now, the one final thing I want to show you. When you're putting content into a topic, there's no point in having your learners scroll two and a half miles down to get to your content. Um, I think each of these recordings are awesome. I think my users in my RoboHelp project are going to appreciate the interactivity. They're probably not going to appreciate just how busy this is going to get. And they may not, may not even know that there is a lesson at the bottom because they didn't think about scrolling two and a half miles down. So let me show you an alternative. Okay. I'm going to select the first simulation and I'm going to cut it. Just control X. Now there's no space between my paragraphs, right? I'm going to highlight the word start an application. So I'm going to highlight the heading, right? And there is an option here on your toolbar. If you run your mouse over the tools, one of the tools is going to be drop down placeholder. So of course you just have to find it. It's this one here. Create drop down text. I don't know why I clicked this one. So ignore that. Ignore my fumbling there. I was seduced by the plus sign. It's the tool over here, create drop down text. I'll click that. And it then puts a little placeholder here. Type your drop down content text here. I'm going to highlight that text and I'm going to paste the Captivate project back then. Notice that. A link now has been created. Let me do this again. Select the second recording, cut it, get rid of the carriage return, highlight the heading too. I'm using my tag selector here to make quick work out of that. 
come to the tool without distracting you right here create drop down hotspot text highlight the placeholder text i'm not getting the carriage return just the text up to the carriage return and i'm pasting there's two let's do it again because it's so difficult right get the third one cut it get rid of the carriage return highlight the h2 boom you can use your mouse if you want to i did not use the drop down text tool highlight the placeholder text paste boom got one more to do it's the one we did together select it cut it get rid of the carriage return highlight the heading two come to the hotspot tool here to drop create the drop down text scroll down just a little bit highlight that placeholder paste preview keep your fingers crossed the vertical, the two miles of scrolling is gone. Where did my Captivate Interactive e-learning go? To the link, the lesson opens, you play it, it's done, it's awesome, it's cool, I love it, right? And again, if you think something up my sleeve, remember, I'll click the link to collapse, that we did this one together. So, no fooling around. That's the one that we did. And it's just as interactive as it was when I created it. If you think that's too small, I already showed you on the edit or authoring window, you select your recording. I'll go to this one and you can choose on the top panel here, the content properties. You can change the width and the height. Again, if I change the width to 900, as long as this padlock is turned on. Well, I tried to do 900. There it goes, 900 by 507. You can make these Captivate lessons as big as you want. All right, that's it. Uh, let's take a look and see if there's any questions and answers. And I wanna remind you all before I get too far afield here that I am Kevin Siegel. You'll find me at iconlogic.com. Send me an email, ksiegel at iconlogic.com if you have any questions after this session. And of course, I'm on uh, uh, LinkedIn and Twitter and that kind of stuff. All right, thank you. Let's see if there's any questions.